Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Story Mode. Tataru has news about one of the Scions, and I, for one, want to hear it. But first, a little sip of that tea for the voice. Okay, now we're ready. I love how long <laughs> it takes for you to hear news about one of the disappeared Scions. Like, I love how far you get into Heaven's Word just focused on the Heavensward story with Alphano and Estinian and Emmerich and all these others before they start, like, reintroducing any of that the old guard back into things. Also, the um, Dark Knight Appreciation Circle has expanded, and I assume that's only going to continue. It's literally weeks later since last time this was happening. Anyway, Tataru, please. Tataru's eager to share her progress in the search for the missing scions. When you fled the victory feast, you used the ancient watercourse beneath the city, right? Well, shortly after things went back to normal in Uldah, I asked Marshal Terrapin to have the tunnels searched. A logical place to look. It was there that you lost contact with Minfilia, Thancred, and Yustola, was it not? Dare I ask what the Marshal found? Um, I don't actually know. Pippin's message just said that there had been a discovery and that we were to come to the Hall of Flames at our earliest convenience. I dare not think what it might be. We shall depart at once, Tataru. Let Uriange know to join us in Uldah. He will wish to be present as well. Yes, sir. All right, it's a plan then. Exciting. Let's get back to Uldah. By the way, I almost forgot. I've got a new little set of gear going on. Not one that anyone made. This is just gear that you can get as quest rewards and purchase from vendors around level 56 or so in Heavensward. And I like the look of it. And I threw in a, uh, a different spear I got from like the Rama fight or something at one point, just for funsies since it has a fun electrical effect. Anyway, now you're caught up. And here we are at the Hall of Flames. Where is news? Ah, Pippin. And Orionje, been a bit. As thou art returned to us, wherefore might our comrades not be the same? Never shall I concede them lost till I've seen proof of their passing. If I'm understanding your sentence, I think I agree. We're grateful for your assistance, Marshal Terrapin. You saved her grace and father both. Tis the least I can do to repay you. Forgive me my impatience, Marshal, but your missive mentioned a discovery? Yes, of course. As per your request, I had my men scour the waterways. Almost immediately, we encountered a difficulty. An entire section of the tunnel had collapsed. With the Mineral Concern's cooperation, however, we were able to remove the rubble, which yielded the battered bodies of a dozen Crystal Braves. Go on. Be at ease, Master Alphano. Your friends were not among the deceased. That alone is cause for hope. And then there is this. You stole his wand. I had assumed as much. If I may, Marshal. Tis as I did surmise. Judging by the etheric imprint that lingereth yet upon this wand, it hath assuredly been employed in the casting of a most uncommon magic. Namely? The very first that man did conceive to traverse great distances, and the ancient precursor to all methods of travel that utilize the life stream, flow. The spell entaileth the reduction of the corporeal form into its constituent ether, that the caster might enter the life stream and ride its currents thereby. Unlike the teleportation magics of modern times, it requireth not a lengthy incantation. That Yestola should choose to employ such a spell bespeaketh the need for haste. All of which would suggest she managed to escape. Would that it were so simple. Know that the scholars of Charlian forbade the use of this spell, and with good reason. 
The caster hath but limited control over his course. For every mage who came safe unto his destination, another would be set adrift in the life stream, never to emerge. What? No. No, you can't mean... Be not downcast, my friends, for there is yet hope. Tis like that Yastola's passage hath left traces in the life stream. Could we but follow these from the point at which the magic was invoked, we may yet find her. To the Silda excavation site, then. Our thanks for your aid, Marshal. Do not mention it. I shall pray for Lady Yastola's safe return. We have a lead! Hooray! Now let's go find... Where is the Sildi excavation site? Oh, just a little outside of town. Okay, cool. Let's just fly there. So nice having the power of flight. Just for old time's sake. Let's see, just outside the city, down here. Yeah, this looks pretty familiar. Man, we were around here like, what, episode one, two of A Realm Reborn? <laughs> Been a bit. If our friends weren't in the tunnel, that must mean they're somewhere else. Simply being here calls to mind the event of that fateful day. Evidence of Yustola's passage will have been made faint by time, but mayhap some faint, a uh, few scant traces yet remain to guide our steps. The trail leadeth to the north and east, unto the bosom of the Twelveswood. Are you certain? Aye, there is no mistake. Thither hath Yestola journeyed. And yet the Gridanians have reported no sightings. We must take this to mean that she's still adrift. If it be so, I do fear for our friend. Contrary to its name, the life stream's more akin to a raging torrent. Linger over long in the midst of this maelstrom, and the ether that formeth one soul shall surely be scattered, ne'er to be reformed. We have no time to waste. Rianje, pray explore all possible options for reversing the effects of this forbidden magic. Dermin, Tataru, we three shall press on to Gridania and petition the Elder Seed Seer's aid. All right, to Gridania then. Once more we come here, begging the Seed Seer for help. Hold on, Yastola, we're coming for you. It is said that the Elementals perceive the life stream. If, as we suspect, Yastola is still adrift in its mists, uh, midst, they may be able to find her. But if we're to appeal to them for assistance, we must needs to do so through their chosen, the Pajol. It's imperative, therefore, that we speak with Kani Sena without delay. I'm sure she'll make time for us. She loves us, we're special. Alphano is eager to petition the Elder Seat Seer's aid in rescuing Yustola. I've already requested an audience with the Elder Seat Seer. She will receive us in the Lotus Stand presently. We need but speak with the Conjurer yonder to be admitted. Same protocol as always. Got it. Let me in. Thank you.
I got a good feeling about this. Be welcome, my friends, and speak freely. I gather your suit will admit no delay. It will not, my lady. Pray forgive the abrupt nature of our request, but it is a matter of life and death. I see. As you say, we must needs act swiftly if we are to free Yishtola from the ungentle pull of the life stream. And as you have surmised, we cannot do this unaided. However... In requesting the Elemental's assistance to find Yishtola, you must needs be aware of one difficulty. A difficulty born of the fundamental difference between man and elemental. That being... In perceiving the world around him, man relies upon senses such as sight and sound. For the sake of convenience, he gives names to such things as are near or dear to him. Being formed of pure ether, however, such concepts are foreign to the elementals. Instead, they perceive by observing the ebb and flow of the energies of life. So profound a division cannot be bridged with simple discourse. The elementals' voices stir not the air, and thus reach not our ears, while our words are but wind to them. Though we seers can commune with them through feelings, Nought that we can impart will serve to aid them in identifying Yishtola. Nay, they must needs be presented with ether which is akin to hers. If you could but find a family member. Ooh, ooh, I know this one. Oh, I know just the person. Yishtola has a sister who came to live in Gradania. She told me about her once. Oh, that is most fortunate indeed. Pray, seek this sister out then, and bring her to Evershade. There, we shall petition the Great One's aid in finding your lost companion. Ah, oh, this is fun. And it's the sort of thing where, well, since we're not doing a whole lot of side content, you don't get to see this very often, but the writers of 14 are very, very good at having, at making this world feel connected, at tying a whole lot of stray elements together in interesting ways. So players who happened to be playing a summoner through A Realm Reborn are actually probably going to have a guess as to who Yastola's sister might be, because they will have spent a lot of time with her. She's kind of your main contact and trainer as a summoner from levels 30 to 50. So uh, players who happened to have played that job already might have already known the answer to that question before Tataru brought it up. Whereas everyone else who just heard Tataru like speak up, oh, she has a sister who lives in this town, might think that that's, oh, that's just a convenient little thing that they wrote in for themselves. Nope, that sister's been here the whole time. It's great. And they do that sort of thing a lot. I was not aware that Yustola had a family member here in Gridania. How very convenient. Forgive me, I've grown so accustomed to being laughed at by the fates. I cannot help but mistrust them when they smile on us. We must, of course, seek the woman out at once. And I suspect, since Dermon here has summoner level to good ways, that we are that she's actually going to know us when we get there too. If memory serves, Yustola's sister is named Yumitra. Oh, you know her, do you? Well then, that ought to make things easier. Anyway, she spends most of her time around Apulu Falls, from what I recall. Let's look for her there. Let's do. That shouldn't be too far. Mitra! Sister of Yastola! Need help? Quickly! There you are. Hello!
Greetings, Derman. What brings you here today? I see that you have companions. Lady Amitra, it is an honor to meet you. My name is Alphano Levier, and this is Tataru Taru. There is so much to explain. So you are my sister's comrades in the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. When I heard that your people were being pursued, I desperately sought to reach Stola, but all mine efforts were to no avail. Now I know why. A forbidden spell of all things, that she should be so reckless. But what's done is done. I thank you for bringing word to me. Needless to say, I should be glad to help. Though we were born of different mothers, our veins course with the same father's blood. I hope that this will be enough for the elementals. Come, let us make for Evershade at once. Somebody in comments who knows better, do you want to explain how Mikote family names and blood and all that work? I think someone has already, but uh, like the Y in Yashtola's name is a family name, which is why her sister would just call her Shtola. Interesting stuff like that. The writers and lore builders of this world have gone way overboard in a lot of very fun ways when it comes to world building and naming conventions and all that stuff. Anyway, not important right now. Let us begin. Raya O, Arun, if you would. Hearken to me, O oh great ones. Pray give yourselves to the life stream, a drifting soul to find. Please, Yishtola. Please come back to us. There. Now! The room has been readied at the roost. Pray, bear her thither at once.
All that remains is to pray, my friends. Come on, let's hurry and check in. Let us pray that Yustola awakens. Oh, Yustola. Just seeing her face again, it's... Oh, I've been so worried. You and me both. Can we go in? Tataru needs you to fetch a few items for a crafting endeavor. Yustola's resting within an inn room. Though she's still unconscious, the signs are positive. The conjurers say that she's in sound health and should awaken before long. Isn't that wonderful? Now, while we wait for Yastola to wake up, I thought I'd take the opportunity to finish my little surprise for her. It's something I've been working on for a while now, in the hope that she'd one day return to us. It wants for just a couple more items before it's ready. I've already placed orders for these items. Could I ask you to retrieve them for me? One is with the Leatherworkers Guild, and another is with the Conjurers Guild. Speak with Mistress Giva, or Jiva and Brother Isumion, and they ought to take care of you. You got it. I'll be right back. Leather workers, I'm here to fetch. Something. I don't know what it is. It's for Tataru. What? What is it? I'm a busy woman, so be quick about it. If you wish to place an order, speak with Randall. Hmm? Here to retrieve an order. For Mistress Tataru, you say? You come at a good time. I finished it but moments ago. It was no small coup working with to her specifications, but I did it nonetheless. Payment has already been settled. However did that girl come by Chimerical Hide anyway? You need either balls of steel or a bottomless coin purse, and it seemed to me she had neither. Thank you. Excellent. That's one down. Next to the Conjurer's Guild. Conjurers! Tataru needs something. Drop literally everything you're doing. It cannot possibly be as important. Greetings, Derman. I trust you've been well. Is there aught you require of me? Ah, yes, Mr. Tataru's order. As requested, it has been sanctified in the sight of the elementals. I know not what she intends for the staff, but it's a most singular artifact. Even one possessed of my experience would struggle to wield it. Sounds perfect. Thank you. All right, let's get back. Quickly! Got it! Ah, you're back! You have the items, I hope? There you are. A leather bag containing an item prepared by the Leatherworkers Guild, as per Tatara's request, and same but Conjurer's Guild. Here you go. Oh, it's precisely as I requested. A perfect match for the other pieces. Truly, Jiva's a master among masters. And the staff completes the surprise. Thank you so much, Derman. I can't wait to see what Yastola thinks of the surprise. Lest you wonder, she's doing very well, and the conjurers have left her in her sister's care. Let's go and pay them a visit, shall we? Yes, please. It's been months. Yastola! I'm so glad you're back! Tataru. <laughs> you are safe. Thank the Twelve. Something has changed about you, Elphino. Or mayhap the change is with me. I seem to sense the ether around me more keenly than before. I am pleased to see you well again. Do you feel strong enough to talk? Worry not. I am well enough. Tell us then. What befell you after you fled the feast? We were told that there had been a tunnel collapse. That was my doing. 
I brought the tunnel down that you and Minfidia might escape. At the last moment, I invoked a teleportation magic, in hopes of spiriting Thancred away at least. Needless to say, it did not go quite as planned, and I found myself adrift in the life stream. The others? Where are they? Did they not escape? They remain unaccounted for. You were the only one we have been able to find. I am truly sorry. It was the Crystal Braves who pursued you that day. My hubris that led to our undoing. No apologies are necessary, Alpha No. You are not to blame for what occurred. Know that were our comrades here, they would commend you for keeping the light of hope alive. Don't... don't worry. The others are alive and well, I'm sure of it. We just need to find them. Indeed, Tataru. Let us find our friends and rebuild the Scions. Ha! There is the Alphano I remember. And I feel much the better for his return. Tis time I arose. <gasps> that reminds me! I have a change of clothes for you! I don't like to boast, but I made them myself. I learned how to weave while we are in Ishgard, you see? Looking sharp. Tataru has apprised me of all that took place in the aftermath of the assassination plot. It would seem I have been away for some while. Yes, much and more happened during your absence. At present, we seek to follow the Archbishop to Azisla. And you want for some manner of etheric ram to pierce the floating isle's protective barrier? We do. Might you be able to furnish us with one? A means to prise open a hole in an Alagarn barrier. And one large enough to admit an airship, no less. Hmm. Nay, I lack the knowledge to devise such a weapon. But I know of one who could. A leading figure in the field of etheric research, and one of the finest scholars ever to grace Charlian. Matoya, my former master. And a familiar name to Final Fantasy I players. Ah, it's good to have her back. With a new look and everything. So this is something that I think is so clever that they do with Heaven's Word, or at least with post-Realm Reborn stuff. They give us a good amount of time away from all of these scions and characters who we knew, or at least a lot of them. And then the ones that they reintroduce, they bring back a good while later with a new voice, give, probably give them a new look, and just kind of reintroduce them individually so you don't have to catch up with everyone at once and give them a moment to shine. It's a really good way to do it, and I love the results. They feel familiar and new at the same time. Matoya. The name rings strangely familiar. To me as well. Tee, Yastola looks absolutely smashing in her new outfit, don't you think? I do think it's great. You've done a great job. Yastola wishes to tell you more about her former master, Matoya. That's great, I wish to hear. In my youth, I had the honor of studying under Matoya. In the field of etheric research, she was without rival. I have no doubt that her knowledge will be of aid to our cause. The question is, will she share it with us? My master has ever been willful. The gods forbid anyone disagrees with her. 
When the Garlean Empire first marched upon Eorzea some fifteen years ago, the denizens of Charlian were summoned back to the Motherland. However, Matoya refused to join the Exodus. To this day, she lives in a hermit's life, uh, or lives a hermit's life on the fringes of the abandoned city. So it's to the Dravonian hinterlands that we must go, to the place of my birth. Though Alice and I were born in Charlian, our days there were short. We remained only until the Exodus, and I've not returned since. Oh, so it's to be a homecoming then. As fine a reason as any to go to Charlian, and it would afford us the opportunity to pay my master a visit. <clears throat> I believe you've mistaken our primary objective, Yishdola. At any rate, the journey will take us through a largely unknown territory. Let us first return to Ishgard and make our preparations. It's a plan, then. Perfect. We got another friend and we're back on track. Great. To Ishgard, then. Ah. Momentum. I can feel it. We managed to find Ystola. Given time, I'm sure we'll be reunited with the others as well. So this is the Holy See. I should like to linger a while and take in the sights, but it must wait till after our mission. Yes, one thing at a time. Charlian is situated in the Dravanian hinterlands. To get there, we must strike west and traverse the breadth of, a Dravanian uh, of the Dravanian forelands. Make no mistake, it'll be a grueling journey. The party shall be comprised of Dermon, Ishtola, and myself. Tataru, pray remain in Ishgard and continue the search for our missing friends. Yes, sir. First, let's make for Tailfeather. Okay. It is a plan. To Tailfeather! There we are. And there y'all are. So quick. When last we set foot here, Estinian and his sail were with us. Though it was not all that long ago, I find myself strangely taken by nostalgia. A long soak in the life stream, followed by a long journey. I would not recommend it to anyone. But rest assured, my strength is returning to me. I shall be back to my former self ere long. Don't you rush it. You still was ready to press onward, uh, press on westward to the Dravanian hinterlands. I believe I'm sufficiently rested. Let us continue west to Charlian. Once we descend the mountain path, we will arrive at the Dravanian hinterlands. From there, it's but a short distance to the city. Be warned that we shall be passing through Nath territory. We must needs be wary of them and the dragons both. Okie dokie. Westward then. Come, Quay friend. We fly! I so enjoy getting an aerial view of places we've already covered. Gives you more of a sense of the layout, kind of the terrain at large. It's great. And we're all scheduled here to arrive in a new location during the day with lighting. <laughs> Hooray! As it should be. And I guess as I should try to make a tradition of Henceforth. Here we are. We arrive. To the Thaliac River, where to the melted snows of Abelathia's spine eventually find their way by means of a thousand silver streams. whose waters have long nourished the Dravanian hinterlands, and so provided for a settlement of learned souls from across the northern seas. To the city of Charlian, that great seat of knowledge now abandoned by her keepers, they came. Gorgeous. Matoya dwells on the far side of the Thaliac River. Let us search for a crossing.
What a cool place. And thus ends my brief period of flight. Alas. So the Charlians, that group, that nation, I suppose, that uh, Alphano was born to, and where uh, Yastola and the rest of the Archons all studied, where uh, Louis Sois was from originally, which I guess makes sense, as Alphano's grandfather. They hail from a nation further north of here, but they sailed down here, and this is kind of the settlement they established here in Eorzea. And it was just a big nation of scholars. A country of nerds, if you will. But at a certain point, I suppose when Garlemald invaded, they abandoned the place, and now it's just sort of been left to ruin. But it's fun getting an early taste for like their architectural style and everything. Just seeing the old streets and the buildings and whatnot. It's very good. Especially that tower. I do love that. So I've mentioned before that the environments in this game really step up in prettiness, especially in the next expansion, Stormblood. And one of the commonly believed reasons for that is that this, uh, Heavensward, was the last expansion of the game where they supported the PlayStation 3. Uh, after that, they were no longer limited by the PlayStation 3's technical abilities, and so they could uh, expand what they were doing and uh, make places bigger and more visually complex. And I think that is part of it. But a large part of it is really just color palette, too. The color palettes and uh, design of locations in Stormblood is, I think, just a real spectacle and just gorgeous to look at. You'll see what I mean eventually. Welcome to Idleshire. Knowledge seeks no man, so says the motto of Charlian engraved upon yonder stone. The meaning is simple. It falls to us to seek enlightenment. During the sixth astral era, at the turn of the 13th century, men from the northern nation of Charlian journeyed across the seas to Eorzea in search of knowledge. Upon arriving at these shores, they established a camp for their scholarly endeavors. Over time, this camp grew into a settlement and the settlement prospered, and so much so that it came to be counted among Eorzea's great city-states. Alas, those glory days are now but a fading memory. With her keepers lost to her, Charlian has become an empty husk of her former self. <laughs> Uplander is mistaken. Charlian has new keepers, is on cusp of new age of glory. Hello. Gobbies. Goblins, here to plunder the city. <gasps> Uplander is mistaken, Muchly. We are not thieves. This place is our home. Your home? When last I looked, it was mine and Alphano's. We were born here. Pshh. When Uplanders abandoned city, Uplanders gave up claim. Born here or no, Uplanders are trespassers. Oh dear. A dominance dance. My friends, please. We did not come to dispute your claim to this land. Our purpose here is peaceful. We desire but to cross the river. Be calm, I beg you, and let us speak like the civilized folk that we are. Surely we can come to a mutual understanding. Shh. 
If that is truth, then Uplanders are welcome here. Come with Slowfix. Slowfix will show Uplanders settlement. I have missed interacting with gobbies. And here we are in Idleshire. Now inhabited by gobbies. I've caught up. From the goblins' perspective, such a well-appointed city is certainly an attractive proposition. I suppose it's only to be expected that others would come and occupy Charlian. Nonetheless, it feels akin to having strangers take over your home in your absence. Understandable. <laughs> Here is Heart of Settlement, name of Idleshire. What do we got here? Guests. Greetings to you. I'm Alphino Levier, uh, and may I introduce my companions, Dermin Durami and Yishtola. We've journeyed far in search of a friend, and seek to cross the river. But finding the main bridge collapsed, he went looking for a detour, and ended up stumbling into Slowfix and his crew. Is that right? That is the short of it. Aye. This place, Idleshire. I came expecting a ghost town. Suffice it to say, I'm surprised to find it so alive. Well, with all them precious artifacts lying about, it was only a matter of time before treasure hunters like me moved in. But we weren't the first to arrive, neither. By then, Slowfix and his gobby friends were already settled. At first, gobbies and hunters disliked each other, but understanding came, then friendship. Now, gobbies and hunters have joined hands to, to build great new nation. So that's what happened after we Charlians departed. Oh, so you're locals. Um, no hard feelings, I hope. All these nice buildings, but no one to live in them. Felt like a waste, you know? We've been trying to put the place to rights, and things have been going well for the most part. But it ain't all smooth sailing. Not to sound ungrateful, but the traps your people left lying about are a bloody nuisance. And there's the Illuminati harrying us day and night. Though what now? <sighs> Slowfix has bright idea. Uplanders desire mutual understanding, yes? Best way to understanding is helping one another. Help citizens of Idleshire, and Uplanders can be citizens too. Citizens are free to cross river. Well, I'm not aware of a quicker way to reach our destination. Let us assist Slowfix and his people. Then we are in agreement. Ooh, is that a new lance for me? It is not, it is stuff for other Keep, that's fine. Here, I'll take, um, I don't know. Hey, which one looks coolest? Let's just, like, look around. Which one looks coolest? It's not a terrible sword. It's all right. Mm, kind of cool axe. I can see going with that one. Not a bad Dark Knight sword. It's all right. It's all right. And kind of basic as a samurai sword. Let's go with the uh, warrior axe. It's not bad. For style, you see. Uh, oh, here, before we start this next one, let's go ahead and call it a day, and we will resume on Friday. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you then. Do take care, and goodbye!